Praise God, Lord Jesus. Bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. I plead your blood on this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Some of you that's having spiritual uh, warfare, here's a couple of uh, prayers you can look up. But I want to talk a little bit about heaven, a little bit, and what, what God is doing for us because we talk a lot about things are going to happen on the earth, things are happening, um, a lot of destruction coming. You know, he wants obedience, obedience, what he does. But let's talk about why. And what do you, not that we do it to get anything out of it, but what do you get out of it? Let me explain something to you. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death. Okay. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So heaven is a place of wonder, breathtaking beauty and boundless joy that you will enjoy forever. It consists of ever unfolding panoramas of delight and astonishing vistas where you will enjoy everlasting life together with your loved ones and the saints of all ages and God himself. Okay, you were spiritually dead and destined for hell, but God has given you eternal life through Jesus Christ. And what's more, you don't need to maintain possession of this inheritance through your own efforts. Jesus said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand in John 10, 28. So no worry or fear or sorrow will ever mar your everlasting sojourn in this heavenly country. No sickness or infirmity will cause you to sigh. All the sorrows and pain you've ever known is going to be gone says, you, you will surely forget your trouble, recalling it only as waters gone by in Job eleven sixteen. So heaven is not some stuffy landscape where bored saints are dressed up in starchy white robes, ma and, uh, making a discordant noise on the harps all day in and out there. That's not what it is. Heaven is fascinating, interesting, exciting, and it'll be far more beautiful than you could ever imagine it would be. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52 says, we will not all sleep. That means we will not all die, but we all will, but I'm sorry, we will not all sleep, but we will be, let me read it again. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye for the trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. So when you pass from this life, your spirit is separated from your mortal body and goes into the presence of God. But you won't be a disembodied spirit for all eternity. Okay? When Jesus returns in the rapture, if you're still living, your physical body will be instantly transformed. That's what will happen. If you're no longer alive on that day, then your body, though it's scattered dust and ashes, will be resurrected and reunited with your spirit. Okay? There's a restoration. God is a God of restoration. Your new body will be physical and solid. The Bible says flesh and bone. Yeah. Though, though it was once weak and aging, it will be gloriously transformed and made eternally youthful. It'll have powers that you've never dreamed of. Your body right now is perishable, but it will be raised imperishable. It's full of imperfections right now, but it'll be raised in glory. It's weak now, but it will be raised in power. God is power. All power. You can read that 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 42 through 44. So you can get along fine in heaven just as a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. But you will need an amazing new body to live on the amazing new earth and all the other many worlds that when you when uh, you're going to go to. Okay, read Revelation 21 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So God said of the Old Testament saints, but now they desire a heavenly country. Therefore, God has prepared a city for them in Hebrew eleven sixteen, And what a city. Just as a bride goes to great pains to make herself lovely, so God will spare no effort to make the new Jerusalem beautiful beyond comparison. 
Okay, the heaven, the heavenly Jerusalem is an enormous city complex fashioned out of unearthly crystalline gold, vaster than any earthly city. The Bible states that it's over 1,400 miles high, 1,400 miles wide, and 1,400 miles long. Okay, believers have been desiring just such a fantastic city for thousands of years. So it's therefore the true home of every longing soul because the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. Galatians 4.26. Right now, this amazing city is in the heavens, but in the future, it will descend to earth. This city is where God dwells, where his throne is. And where millions of places, palaces, boulevards, and parks glow with the glory of the Almighty. It's a real place, y'all. And you're going to be there very soon. You're going to be there. You don't need a sun. You don't need a moon. God is so powerful. He lights up the whole place. He does. The glory of Jesus Christ lights the whole heavens. So... If you go to John 14, 2 through 3, it says, there is no, I'm sorry, I can't see it. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, I would have told you so. I'm going to prepare a place for you. When everything is ready, I will come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus has gone ahead into the highest heavens where he sits enthroned at the right hand of the eternal father, robed in splendor and magnificent light. Okay. He said that he wanted his disciples to be with him where he, where he was so that you could see him in all the glory that his father gave him. You can see John uh, 17, five and 24, but Jesus presence and light fill the entire city. Not just the throne room. Read it in Revelations 21, 23. There are many places in this fabulous city where you can always be with him where he is. Jesus will also visit you in your heavenly uh, palace, a spacious mansion-like dwelling. He went ahead to personally prepare your uh, um, eternal abode. Every detail of your reward will reveal his intricate care and his love for you. Yeah. The son of God wants you to always be with him forever. That's why he makes this beautiful promise. He's coming back to get you, to take you to this astonishing city where you will dwell with him joyfully forevermore. He tells you there's treasures and look up Matthew six twenty. lay up, for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break in or steal. Jesus urged believers to diligently store up our treasures in heaven. But many Christians don't take it literally. They think it's a metaphor for, for some transcendent reality. They, they, they envision heaven as an enormous cloud bank where believers perpetually drift around strumming harps and singing hymns, Right. They therefore think that um, that's what, that the treasure Jesus was referring to must refer to abstract qualities like joy and peace. But the truth is, God has promised you treasure in the afterlife. That's what he said. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according to as his work shall be, Revelation twenty two twelve. So consider the heavenly mansion you will live in, the crown you're going to wear, and the streets of gold you're going to walk on. I'll throw my crown at the feet of Jesus. He deserves it. That's right. The Bible repeatedly tells you about heavenly rewards to motivate you to do good deeds. And, and whatever form these rewards take, they're well worth striving for, you guys. You obey Jesus simply because it's the right thing to do. Regardless of whether he rewards you or not, you obey Jesus because it's the right thing to do for him. But just the privilege of living in the heavenly city would be enough, right? But be assured, 
It's God's good pleasure to bless you beyond measure. Okay, so I want you to remember this. I like to think I like to ponder on stuff like this when I'm going to bed at night because it makes me in a better place spiritually. It puts me in a better mood from whatever kind of day I've had and 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 I can sleep, I can rest a little bit more easily. All right. I just wanted to share that with you to maybe give y'all some encouragement cuz I know a lot of you are having a tough time right now and with things, but be encouraged. God has something fabulous waiting for us, y'all. And it's not fluffy clouds. It's real. It's something that you can't even comprehend. But it's worth obeying God for. It's worth waiting for. It's worth studying his word for. It's worth talking to him and praying to him. It's worth doing the things he tells us to do. It's worth obeying God. Because it's going to be so worth it. Even though you can't humanly comprehend what all he's got for us. One thing I can tell you that we can understand, we, we don't understand everything he has for us, right? But we understand this. We're not going to have this mess we have now, like pain and sorrow and hurt and all that. We're not going to have that at all. So whatever else he can add, take that away. And whatever else he gives us is just nothing but a gift. Nothing but a gift. And I'm ready for it. And I hope you are too. Just tell him, just say, my king, I'm so honored to be your child. I cannot wait to live as, as the prince or princess in your beautiful kingdom. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Give him worship. I say, Lord, do you ever stop thinking of good gifts to give us? Help me to remember I have treasure in heaven waiting for me to claim it. In Jesus' name. All right, y'all. If you don't know Jesus, ask him to save you. If you haven't obeyed God, obey him. If you haven't seeked him today, go seek him. If you haven't prayed to him, pray to him. If you haven't worshipped him today, worship him. All right. God bless each one of y'all, my brothers and sisters in Christ. God bless you.